Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Control. This is episode 23. Hey, I found a file on the and before we go back point. down to the foundation to find our way out of that first astral plane leakage zone, I did see someone mentioning that you should go check out Dylan once right? you start the DLC, because apparently he looks a little different now. He looks the same now, so maybe that's after you finish the DLC. But apparently he grows a bit of a beard and his hair starts to grow back. Since, you know, time is passing here. But alright. Yeah, the director took on an astral spike. <laughs> Let's warp back down to where we were, because there was a control point right at the end. On Astral Platform PW. Not to be confused with Astral Tower PW. In between episodes, I actually did go back and try some expeditions. I completed the first tier ones, which were pretty rough. I finished it with 44 seconds to go, because there is actually a boss at the end after you complete the four sections. Also, it's a lot less random than they make it sound when they describe the DLC, because the, the missions I had to do in each of the four s sectors was exactly the same, even on the second tier difficulty. So clearly that stuff doesn't change, which sucks. It should be randomized missions for each one. But then it's free DLC, so they didn't bother. Yeah, also, last time I didn't know where to go once we got here, but I had not really noticed that this section was new, right there. Because the rest of that is all stuff we've already done. So I was like, oh, we just gotta get over there. But no, I think there's a, a battery there that'll raise up another section, so we just have to get down there. I should be able to do just by floating. But yeah, so the expeditions. I finished the tier 1. That was doable. The tier 2, it seems like the way they increase the difficulty is just through the modifiers. The first one only has one modifier. But the second one has a negative and a positive modifier. However, the negative modifier I got was enemies have 175% more health. Which, uh, in a timed section like that, meant that it was, you know, impossible for me to finish that in time. With bullet spongy enemies becoming even more bullet spongy. Specifically named enemies, which are already a little too spongy, are fucking nightmares with that kind of modifier. So it's 100% dependent on what modifiers you get, I think, on how doable it is. That's a rock. The problem is, if I want to do it again now, you know, tier 3 costs 3 points. So I would have to craft another 3 jukebox tokens, which costs a lot of source. You know, the, the generic resource you get from enemies. So, it's a pain in the ass, is basically what I'm saying. And I don't know if I'm ever going to complete tier 3, even though I would like to get that outfit and find out what it is. I did get a new appreciation for C's, though. Oh, you're not the possessed one. Thought I killed them all. Yeah, there's another battery here. I don't see another slot, though. Alright, so I think this whole area that we're in right now is still just the first anchor of the ones we need to... They said there was four, I believe, that we need to fix in order to fix the nail. say these astral enemies really just seem like reskins of the hiss. They don't seem to do anything special. 
Like, I actually thought that was just gonna be an astral rock guy. Also, the one guy who has this power that is a named enemy in the expeditions is fucking awful. He is the one that takes so much damage. Like, it's unbelievable to me how much damage I just did to that guy by shooting him because of how little it does to the other guy. be quick because I don't know if those grow back. I will say that so far the kind of setup for this foundation DLC isn't really grabbing me. Like there's nothing too special about it. It's just oh no the astral plane is leaking. Better plug it up Jesse because you are both a plumber and the director. If only Ati he was here he'd probably fix this himself. But I think that's because a lot of the side stuff really was the stuff I enjoyed the most about the main game. You know, tracking down those out-of-control objects and whatnot. That was the most fun stuff, I think, over just the fighting through lots of hiss. Which is sort of what we're doing here. Another thing I noticed too is that this DLC, or the patch, seems to have also added another tier of health and energy upgrades. Since I was maxed out on those before, and now there's another one available. So at, at least the ability points are worth something again for the moment. Astral Mimic. Astral Mimics are physically indistinguishable from astral copies, but considerably more dangerous due to the fact that they possess para-utilitarian abilities. The most, noticeable, the most notable ability witnessed is Levitation. It is unknown how this astral entity gains its paranatural abilities. The relevant objects of power are currently bound to Director Faden, which indicates the objects are not responsible. However, objects of power are intrinsically linked to the board and the astral plane. A similar link between the objects and the mimics could also exist, or perhaps the board is able to dispense these abilities at their leisure, with no trial in the astral plane required. The prevailing theory, however, is that these entities are simply replicating observed abilities performed by the Hiss, or even the director herself, thanks to prolonged exposure to our world caused by the astral bleed. Or because we didn't want to make enemies with new abilities. For most games, that would be too fourth wall breaking, to explain it away, but in this game, maybe not so much even. Headshot boost. I think that's just the energy restoring one. Did I just knock a loot chest off? Okay, no, it's still there. It's wedged in the floor. This is just like the tower we came from. And that means we should be good. 
Nope. I think there is actually one more. Now that just kind of looks like an arena, so maybe we just need to go down there. Injury day plus 86. There's been a change. Hercules and Mabel. I mean, hit numbers 3 and 11. Attacked my staff today. Two fatalities. Three, if you count Mabel. She was always so kind. As a result, we are abandoning the Foundation. Northmore gave the order to transfer our resources to the upper floors. Now that my control points allow us to safely come and go from the New York streets, did I forget to include that fact in my previous logs? I've been so busy using the arrays I made. Control points have been established throughout okay, the Okay, I thought he was saying that he could teleport through them as well, but he just means he stabilized them. I don't sound excited, it's just... A few months ago, I would have been overjoyed to leave the Foundation. And now I realize I've grown fond of it. There's something deep in the stone here, deeper than that watching presence. Something warm. I feel it needing me. I won't go. I refuse. Northmore won't be happy, but so be it. I'm starting to see him for what he is. An impotent storm. Father Shade in a cheap suit. I wonder if we're gonna find out what those ids are. Explosive ammo refund. Alright, are we supposed to be able to make it down there from here? Because I, I think we can. With some drift. Alright, tough guy. Let's see if we can drop him in a bit. Still, he's not named, which means he's not as tough. Oh, God damn. There's nobody else here for me to siphon health off of. Mm, these big enemies don't get stunned when you're doing this. Protect me, Squire. Why are so many of the enemies down here shirtless? Still didn't actually get shield rush because I haven't gotten the ability points yet. Is that it? Can we now secure this piece of the uh, fragment? Melee health boost. There's definitely some new drops. Like this one gives you health back when you melee enemies. So those weren't in the main game. Other etching. Like the one I used to get in here. All right, this should be the first anchor. Is this the lock slash key the board told me about? 
Ancient Abalone. So there was our first appearance of the former in this DLC, so... As I figured, he's probably integral to what's going on here. What's going on with the sphere? Well seasoned. Just doing my job. Well, that's a cool orb. First one down. Director Faden's got this covered. All right. So we got four ability points for completing that. I guess there are going to be three more astral plane bleeds like that. Is that an enemy? Nope. There seem to be some personnel down here now. I guess they've set up. And there's Emily. Jesse, hey. Hey, you came down here on your own. Down here? Without me telling you to. What are you doing down here, Emily? What do you mean? You called me down, remember? I'm pretty sure I didn't. No, that's right. You didn't. But then, I remember you needing me to come here. I mean, you even told me how to get in. Let's just chalk it up to synchronicity so we can get to work. She takes everything in stride. The board called me down here to deal with the situation. The astral plane is colliding with our world, I know. Isn't it fascinating? I never even considered that the astral plane could be a, a physical volume expanding beyond its dimensional container. The bleed is localized to this area, but its growth rate seems steady. Given time, it will consume the entire Bureau, and possibly beyond. That's what I'm here to stop. The board told me to fix the nail over there by dismantling four locks in the astral plane. Funny, I think it's put itself back together a bit. So that could be due to the law of inverse. What was that weird mirror? Was that the outside of the component you nail? Remove, this nail reconstructs. Or possibly some variation of anti-sympathy. Don't worry. I'll look into it. Did you notice all the Bureau infrastructure? It looks like there was a research team stationed down here at some point. You think Darling knew about this? I'd put money on it. That reminds me. Have you seen Marshall? She contacted me over the hotline, but then I saw her walking around. I haven't seen her. The hotline only connects to extraplanar entities. Or dead people. But Marshall's proved time and time again that she's a survivor. That's exactly what I thought. Anyway, I've been looking into the minerals growing down here. Have you noticed how they insist on maintaining a certain form? Maybe some sort of a, a state memory? Or they consciously prefer a certain shape? I think we're on a clock here, Emily. I need to stop the astral bleeding before it brings the oldest house down. See what you can find out from the nail in the meantime. And send out some rangers to look for Marshall. She may be in trouble. Will do, Jesse. If you see anything interesting, remember to take detailed notes. How did she even get to the upper part of the foundation above the quarry? You know, the area that's full of enemies and also is super restricted. Do you have anything actually to say down here? The rangers have tapped into an old radio network they found around the Foundation. So if you need backup, just call them at one of the stations. Is that actually a mechanic? Are we going to be able to call them? How did the Hiss get into the Foundation? Same way we did, I imagine. But you need to remember that the Hiss are the embodiment of persistence. Their nature seems to be one of force, to find every possible vulnerability and exploit it. Their only goal is consumption. I'm sure there's plenty of goodies for them down here. The nail, for instance. If the Hiss could corrupt the nail, I'm sure they would have by now. It must not interest them in its broken state. They could be distracted by the numerous unknown paranatural materials I'm sure are lying around. These are the roots of the oldest house. The Hiss will find plenty of ways to make trouble. They're pretty good at that. 
I wonder if that's just gonna get taller every time we complete one of these locks until it reaches the ceiling where the hole is. So you've never heard of the Foundation, huh? I've never even seen the name referenced. That's because the Foundation is redacted. But for what reason? The problem with these kinds of closed off hidden areas is that they were likely sealed for good reason. But now no one is left to tell us what that reason was. Any guesses why the Bureau would hide something like this? I only know what I've observed. This place is spatially rigid, which means it doesn't shift like the rest of the oldest house. And before you ask why that is, I have to admit that I'm clueless. There's some signal interfering with my equipment, making it hard to get a clear reading. It's being emitted from the floor. Maybe I should have brought a jackhammer. The astral plane is already taking chunks out of this place, Emily. Let's not add to it. Clearly you don't know about the Foundation because you don't have OS5 clearance. So let me get this straight. The astral plane is bleeding into the Foundation. Correct. And that's happening because the nail is damaged. I'd say it's a bit more than damaged, but yes, that is my understanding. So what's the connection between the nail and the astral plane? It's a good question. See, I always pictured objects of power as strings between our plane and the astral. If the nail has a similar relationship, then maybe it's more accurate to think of it like plumbing. Now that the nail is busted, sewage is gushing everywhere. Not the prettiest metaphor. All right. Well, thanks, Emily. Out there. Agreed. The astral bleed won't stop itself. I doubt we're going to complete another one of those anchors if they're all the same Don't length. Stranger. But uh, let's see. I think I my mission deselected itself because I was, yeah, because I was doing the expeditions. So we need to get to research site Gamma. Which means we should go back to Cave Bleed. I think there was a control point around there. Alright, so abilities. We have six points. Um, I don't think Ground Slam had damage upgrades before, but it's pretty useful, so that would be a good thing to upgrade. It looks like they just kind of added a whole tier at the bottom here that wasn't here before. Because, you know, we had most of these maxed out except melee. Which, you know, it's kind of neat that they're expanding the skill tree. Give you a reason to keep getting that level ups. Guess? Nope. Let's try Shield Rush. And then I'll use my other two points on more health. And then, the game crashed when I bought that ability point so hard that it disconnected the drive it was installed on. But thankfully I just plugged it back in, and it worked. I don't really know how it got unplugged. I think the wire must have been sticking out and stuck in my chair wheel. So, uh, yeah. And thankfully this game auto-saves a lot. Because it seems like... Oh. Nope. Abilities. Yeah, it seems like I already did spend those ability points, and then it immediately crashed after that, so... Good thing it auto-saves so much. Anyway, like we were going to do, let's travel to somewhere near Cave Bleed. Actually, I guess Crossroads is the closest place to that. I suppose that it's one of the tunnels blocked by Crystal, so we can just shoot our way in now. What is this? Evade Ammo Refund. That's also a weird one that I don't have yet, but it's only level 4, so I won't pick it up. So it's not this tunnel, but it's got to be one of these tunnels. Also, what's over here? Anything we can get to yet? It's whatever is up there. So yeah, we can't reach that yet. Probably lead to an area that's not even on this map. So, I guess, probably doubling back from further ahead. I don't remember specifically seeing an entire doorway blocked by crystal. But I do remember somewhere where I said, there will be a door here. I've got a sniper. We really haven't seen those a lot. Also, it's worth noting that these new guys were also showing up in the expeditions. So that does pull from all the available enemies, not just the 
base game ones. Alright, I just randomly got a jukebox token, so I guess you can find them as well. Performance seems a little more stable this time than it was in the first episode, so that might just been shit running in the background. I say as it stutters for a second. <laughs> These blue ones are the... No, these are only level 3. I think they were level 6. Okay, so... That tunnel also leads where we need to go, but is connected up above. So I guess we do need to go through Cave Bleed and then double back, because I think there's a higher connection point. Maybe that's where we saw a block tunnel before. I'm pretty sure I did go up here. Need to go this way. No, nope. never mind. That's where we came from. We need to go around. Right. get up there. There's not like something I can shoot maybe? Yeah, I can't dash my way and grab the ledge and I can't punch my way up. They're like no punching allowed. So that's also not going to lead us where we need to go, so I guess our next option is Cave Bleed and that other tunnel. Because it does want us to go to Research Site Gamma first. Before we go to the other two sections. Okay, here we got a blocked doorway. It's just treasure chests. I should have expected as much. Melee energy renewal. Ammo refund. I guess we'll go with the melee energy renewal. That's an absolute at least, so it's worth carrying. Get rid of these dinky level threes. So, apparently there's a path over there that we should be able to reach. You know, sometimes it feels like, why kill the last enemy if I know it's just going to spawn a whole nother group instead of just leaving him alive? Okay, how would I even get up there? climb from up there, but that seems a little high. Nope, this is apparently a wall. Can't climb on top of that. Yeah, I don't I don't actually see any way to get to research site gamma. Every path has been blocked. We can't get enough height 
as far as I can tell. So I guess we'll try one of the other paths and see if it somehow doubles back. I mean, obviously the map is not completely reli reliable. New areas will appear on it as needed. I guess we'll just take one of the other paths. The yes. I, were you telling me that it's the director? There's nobody else there. Maybe she's on the radio. This area seems a lot more overgrown with crystals. This is where we've already been. This just leads us back down into the one we completed at the start of the episode. Is it just a dead end? Man, it usually isn't this much trouble to at least find how to get to where we need to go. And this place is supposed to be more stable than the oldest house. Somewhat. Anybody even in this laboratory? I know you'll take care of this director. I'm not worried. It's been five days since we first entered the building. Traversing the interior is dangerous due to the shifting, but we did manage to find a lower cavern that seems structurally predictable. Which is a scientific way of saying its walls won't crush us in our sleep. Northmore even made a discovery. A pistol placed on a stone pedestal in front of that strange ebony pillar. Seems like something out of a storybook, except the heroes usually find swords, not handguns. But it is the perfect lure for someone like But as the board said, it can be whatever it needs to be. Northmore cornered me is about some nonsense about how the board had made him the director. He ran it about the title being meaningless before now, calling father and all other previous directors jams, frauds, and worse. I think this place is worse for Northmore than it is for me. Strangest thing? There was no pedestal in front of that pillar a day ago. This building has swallowed a dozen of my men, and now it's handing out presents? Is it playing some sort of game? If it is, we're most certainly losing. So we don't even know the rules. And that hasn't changed entirely. They still know some of the rules, I guess, on how these things work, but only some of them. Makes it seem like there is. I mean, there, it looks like there's a path there. I might be able to fly across if we're using all my dashes. But I'm guessing that those stubs growing out of the wall means if I had taken the power instead of the destruction ability. I would have been able to, you know, yank some crystals out of the wall to stand on. Don't think I'm going to make it up there, though. It's just another friggin' way out. That's all we're finding, is we're finding ways that you're supposed to exit these tunnels from, not enter them. Alright, well, let's try the last one, and if not, I'll have to figure out a way to go between episodes before we start the next one. Okay, the nail doesn't do anything, right? Can't, like, interact with it? No. I mean, that does look like the former, right? Big spider, single eye. So I wonder if that is the unseen watchers they're talking about. It's just the board. Can't get up there either. Nope. 
Uh, these are all exits, so... <laughs> gonna have to look around and see if I can find an entrance that I somehow missed in this sweep. But for now, I think that'll do it for episode 23 of Let's Play Control. We, at the very least, completed one part of the nail and had a chat with Emily. So next time, hopefully we'll find the second part of the nail and be able to delve deeper into this cavern system if I can somehow find a way in. But until then, I've been Shadefire, this is Control, and I hope you'll join me next time. Take care, everyone.